Ramble. Thank you to BetterHelp, Casetify, and Macy's for sponsoring this episode. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of You Can Sit With Us. I am Maggie. I'm one of your hosts, and I am joined by Becky. Hi. Ariel. Hello. Matthew. Hello. And our pixies over here in the corner, we have Miles and Rainey. Ow! Hey. <laughs> did you guys harmonize on that? We one? did. Yeah. Yeah. It takes practice. It takes practice. I know. What? You guys what? have what? to come up with like a little sign, sign off, <laughs> and off. A jingle. A jingle. I think Miles. I mean, Miles has a jingle. Yeah. 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 We need like a yeah. We need some sort of like bip and bap routine. <laughs> Yeah. Like a cow, <laughs> like you have the awu. I feel like Rainy needs like a cowbell or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or like a rainmaker noise. Ooh. <laughs> Jazz it up. <laughs> How is everyone? I guess I do. Should I go over the overview of the episode? Um, I thought that was great. Yeah, <laughs> I thought that was <laughs> really good. How, How is, is everyone? Is everyone? Is everyone? Is everyone? What did everybody do this weekend? Party animals? Yeah, I did. I was a party animal this weekend. I went <gasps> out. And then I didn't do anything else for the whole weekend. Oh, <gasps> did you Where'd get you too litty? Yeah, just like a little too many <laughs> drinks, you know. Just felt <laughs> tired. You are. I I I do love. I feel like I go out with you enough that when when I I know when you've had too much because the <laughs> next day the next day you will stay in bed until like one p.m. Yeah. and then you sort of roll out and you're like, anybody want breakfast? <laughs> and and everybody's like, Matt, we've. We've eaten. Like, we've had breakfast. Not everyone get up at 6 a.m., Mom, okay? <laughs> <laughs> no, when I get when I get too lit, usually when I'm with you and Becky. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> We're the then enablers, I'll I guess, Becky. I'll We're the enablers. Why do they know when you can say yes? Yeah. Last time we all went out together, it was Becky and Maggie. Rearing oh, the, being, yes, being We moms. were just like. Rearing our children. Yeah. That's true. Rearing our That's babies. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That means now it's your turn to yeah make us the baby. Okay, we're waiting. Yeah. Okay, we're ready. Yeah. Shots. Shots. We'll like, take shot, that. Shot, 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 shot. I brought some vodka. Wonderful. <laughs> love. love. We will be the enablers, and then we will take you home. I love that. Okay, I love that journey Done. for all of us. Good deal. Errol, what did you do this weekend, Ma? Oh, what did I do this weekend? Let's see. We set up the pool in the backyard. Ooh, Ooh a real pool. pool. I mean, We're going to have a pool party. It's, it's Okay, you know those like plastic pools that, that you like above bathe ground? the dog in? Yeah, it's, it's, an, it's an above ground pool. Um, super cool. We got it at Target. Uh, no, it, it's just a blow up pool. Oh, okay. It, you know, but like a bigger one uh, because Wes wanted to learn how to snorkel. <laughs> <laughs> the pool. Oh. So, he's snor- so he's snorkeling around in like a half a foot of water. Oh, <laughs> but it's a big enough pool, he's, and he loves it. He loves it. Yeah. And Finn's just uh, like standing there pouring water on it. Oh. Um, and and, and uh, yeah, so we did that for many many hours. It's a good way to keep cool. It's a good oh, way to yeah. keep cool. Uh, yeah. And then Ned and I actually went to a a show in Laguna Beach called The Pageant of the Masters. Have you guys oh. ever heard of this? I feel like maybe I mean, it's down, down by where, where your parents masters. are, right? Yeah. Did you guys go to the Sawdust Festival? I heard that's They're also down there right now. The Sawdust Festival, yes. Uh, it's That is right outside mm-hmm. of it. And so we went to that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's a show in like every evening where they do this thing where uh, uh, like hundreds of volunteers recreate – um, paintings oh. On, oh. On, on a stage. Oh, yeah. that's cute. I would show you guys pictures, but they didn't allow like photos. Oh, uh, probably performance be- art. Well, it yeah. is performance art. So, yeah. um, like they would paint these backdrops to mm. make to, to make them look like paintings, and then um, there would be a lot like live people in it in costumes, and they would turn off the lights, and then the people would take their position, and then they would turn the lights on, and it would look like the painting. It was. So cool. I wanted, there was, there was one mm. painting where mm. the woman, uh, like right before they turned off the lights, she turned and waved <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> and I was like, yes, finally, <laughs> because you almost couldn't tell who was real and who was not huh. oh. because like the way they did their makeup, the way they did they their, all fake. they Ooh. all look fake. Wow. They, they all look like they, they had been painted in, um, you know, cause like some of the things they would have uh, like skirts wheeled in or something like that, like cardboard, not not cardboard, but like painted skirts. Mm-hmm. And so uh, like uh, a, a live person would be standing there with, you know, full makeup, um, but like, you know, sort of painted looking makeup. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, 
And then, you know, they would pull in a painted skirt so that it it looked exactly like the painting. It was really interesting. My mom had been to a couple where they did pointillism paintings oh, wow. where mm. oh. the person got painted in like, you know, pointillism. Uh -huh. but, uh, so it was very cool. It was very, very cool. Um, yeah. But yeah. Date night. So like Date art night. show and then this this cool like performative art thing. Cool. How about you, Becky? Oh, I also saw some performance art this weekend. We did an escape room. Woo! So we were the you performance made it artists. Yes, we made it out <laughs> with four minutes left. Wow. Yes, we went with Ryan Akar and his girlfriend, Claudia, and then Jared. We all try and make little dates that we go on every once in a while where we get the gang together. <laughs> we yeah. have a silly fun time. And so we walked to an escape room and we did have to ask for a couple clues, which, you know, I don't love asking for the clues, but we were <laughs> just like, it was one of those escape rooms where like, if you did the code wrong on a certain part, it like just wouldn't open. So then we like moved on to something else, but mm -hmm. we really just wasted five minutes because the code was right. We just put it in on the wrong side. Uh, mm. But like I said, it was an escape room that only 25% of people finished. So... You must be a genius. I don't want to brag, and I do think they were telling us the truth, and they weren't trying to pat our egos in any way. <laughs> um, you were in the top 25% yeah. of the escape room people. Yeah. Uh, I think you should probably put that on your resume. I know. We've done about, I would say we've probably done nine or ten escape rooms, and we've only not escaped from one. I think I've Whoa. done two, and I've never escaped. <gasps> Really? <laughs> oh, okay, never go. <laughs> I don't uh -oh. want to be in an escape situation with Matt. Uh -oh. <laughs> I've never done an escape room. I've always wanted to. <gasps> you we should go. I've never done it. Yeah, I'd love to. I don't know why I haven't done it. We'll do an escape room night. They're so fun. fun. That'd be really fun. Yeah, I think I've only done like two or three. But never I always find them either. so fun. I always find them so fun. No, I, I get <laughs> out. <laughs> I've definitely I'm gotten trapped. out of at least one. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I have like a 50-50 chance. <laughs> you do have a 50-50 chance of getting out. It's true. Alive. Yeah. <laughs> well, this escape room that we did, the guy when we got there was like, oh, yeah, this one's really hard. But when you come back, you should do this other one where there's a live actor in the room. Oh. And we were all like, oh, no, <laughs> no, no, spooky, spooky. A real actor while you're trying to like think I'm like, what is he doing? Running around trying to touch you? Probably. <laughs> probably. He's, 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 that's what I'm thinking. He's probably caressing you while, yeah. you're, while you're thinking. You he's, just, he's just fucking with you while you're trying to figure you. stuff out. He gives you a massage. So stupid. <laughs> I don't like it. Maybe he's like a zany scientist. I feel like I did one that was... Uh, <gasps> chemistry themed where mm -hmm. you had to find something before it blew up. Oh, you yeah. Know? yeah. And so <laughs> I could see like a zany scientist wandering around like, oh, maybe I'll pour this in here. And, and, and everybody's like, no, don't do it. <laughs> Why go to a bar when you can go to an escape room? Yeah. <laughs> can you drink it in an escape room? No, but well, that's right. I mean, we did. <laughs> we had a bottle of wine before we did the Got escape it. room. <laughs> Mm. Maggie, what did you do this weekend? I went to one of my friend's bridal brunches um, that ended up taking like the entire day, which I loved. <gasps> it started at 11 and I don't think we got Bottom home till like us. seven. Wow. Yeah, which was really fun. Um, the groom's mom and sisters were in town. So we just caught up basically the entire day. And I was so tired by the time I got home because lots hey, of champagne, <laughs> lots uh, of champagne. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um. And then all day on Sunday, Zach went to the farmer's market for fresh produce. And then I had to go get some pantry staples. So I we split up. And basically, my coworker told me about this new book that she's been loving. It's called Cook Once, Eat All Week. And it's basically like three staple um, ingredients that you can use in like three different recipes. Mm. So it's a way to meal kind prep. of – it's like meal prep. Yeah. but it gives you three different ways you can make it. So I always have the problem where I'm using so much grocery or like so much is going into the trash or I am not getting to it quick enough. Mm. Um, so this way I'm hoping to have less food waste. And I also hate having six leftovers of one thing. So this way I can make like three different meals and have at least two or three, which is great. So, so I'll let you know how it goes. So what are some of the, like, yeah, what's the meals? Yeah. So last night I had like barbecue chicken with riced broccoli and riced cauliflower, mm -hmm. which is really yummy. And then later 
today I think I'm making like a chicken stew with broccoli and then there's like a broccoli fried rice. So broccoli is one of the Got items. It. Yeah. That's I cool. cut everything yesterday and like just basically have them in the freezer. And so when I go to cook, it just takes no more than like 30 minutes. And I'm like, boom, 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 done. That sounds bada bing, bada boom. I got bada three, bing, bada I got boom. three servings. Cause Zach and I eat pretty differently now. He's like very regimented. So I was like, I need, he'll like have a bite or two of my stuff, but I was like, I need more like diversity. I like really get <laughs> bored <laughs> easily. Eating every day. salmon every day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or like broccoli and brown rice and teriyaki. So I'm like, I, I need something else. I need something <laughs> else. <laughs> so I'm trying to liven it up in the kitchen via cookbook guide, which has been good. You guys have done meal subscriptions before where they we have. send you the ingredients and then you yes. you know, cook it from that. Is that your like the meal prepping and subscriptions? Is that your preferred way of cooking? Or do you like do you like going to the grocery store and like spending time and like I like using, you know? I like, or do you like when it's like given? I what like finding my own recipes. I'm mm-hmm. I subscribe to New York Times cooking, so like anytime I have leftover mushrooms in my refrigerator I'll just like type in mushrooms and New York time cooking and be like what can I do what do I have here that I can make yeah. um but yeah when we were living in the apartment and we needed like quick meals mm-hmm. and we were subscribed to purple carrot that was mostly like vegan meals which was really helpful because they showed us different ways to prepare vegetables which was very fun but yeah what about you guys Oh, I'm a walk around the grocery store for, I'll go to like two or three grocery stores in a day. I like go to Whole Foods, Trader Joe's. Do you really? Yeah. Well, cause everyone has different stuff. Like Trader Joe's, like I'm sorry to anyone who's listening. Their produce is trash. It, It dies the next day. It is straight garbage. Do not waste your money on it. But their frozen and pre-prepared stuff and even like some of their breads Mm. are so good. Mm -hmm. They have really interesting snacks. Yeah, Mm -hmm. desserts. They have like cheaper like dried fruit and Mm -hmm. nuts and stuff. So I'll hit that and then I'll go to Whole Foods for like, I'm trying to like salmon. I've never liked salmon. (laughs) I'm trying to make it work. (laughs) And I was like, maybe I'll get fresh salmon this week. Mm. Number one, it was expensive, but then I was like, okay, wait, it was like wait, it was like twenty five dollars. What have you been eating? Then? <laughs> I was eating salmon? frozen salmon. Oh, sure. like that. Okay. I <laughs> thought, <laughs> yeah, fermented <laughs> salmon. What sort no. of salmon? I was getting like the bags of salmon and mm-hmm. then cooking them and finding like different ways to make it and being like, oh, I really, I still don't like the texture of this. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I'll go to Whole Foods and get some fishy fish from them. And yeah, it was like twenty five dollars, and I was like, oh my god, this is so expensive. And then I was like, but was like $12 a person for dinner, like for the protein. I was like, that's not, that's not bad. That's a pretty normal amount. But when you're used to buying like a $9 bag of frozen salmon, I know it gave me a little bit of panic attack. Yeah. But well, did it taste better? Long story short, it was amazing. Yay. I usually only Yay. eat part of my salmon and then Keith is like the garbage disposal. And I actually had seconds of my own. Mm salmon wow. dish because I do a lot of TikTok recipes yeah. yeah, and sometimes they're awful and then I just eat popcorn and sometimes they are so good. They are stars. Oh. So oh. my mom does. She gets a lot of recipes from TikTok. She just yeah. got my grandfather. It's like mine. people are, u- are you utilizing serious? TikTok <laughs> the way they utilize Google. Oh yeah. 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 I love just being able to like look on a recipe and then like seeing like an 80 year old grandma like showing me how to make I don't know, like fried noodles. Oh my like God. Have you like, seen this, this so person on TikTok? I forgot her name. Is she the little lady? No, she's oh, the one she goes little, to people's grave sites <gasps> and pe- different older women, especially who have famous recipes uh-huh. put, they put their famous recipe on their They're headstone. Too- <gasps> so no. this girl on TikTok goes around and eats their recipe of their food at their gravestone and like talks about it and like, Talks about how good they are and oh stuff and like shows God. the recipe. How oh. many people are doing that? Like there has to be enough. There has to be enough. That she can find them. Oh, like, like I want to find her immediately. Like I feel like they're mostly like baked good things. Okay. You know, like famous brownies, oh, uh-huh. cookies, like, cakes. Those like like uh, these were her favorite cookies. Yeah, like my grandmother made the best the, oatmeal raisin cookies yeah. or something like that. Oh, the recipe. So the recipe never dies with them. That's kind of cute. That's so cute. I want to follow her immediately. I forgot her name. <gasps> just look up. Okay, I'm just gonna look yeah, up like sure. gravestones. There, there can't recipes. be that many people. Doing <gasps> I do like. Do you ever see the girl who power washes old gravestones? Mm-mm. Yes. I. And it's tells her so story. soothing, that and she tells so the story satisfying. based on like 
yeah, so she shows the process of like cleaning the gravestone all while she's doing like a voiceover of like, so so and so was born at this time. Um, here's what was like going on in the world. And then she'll say if she like found anything when she was Googling about them, but she'll talk about like what their certain headstone toppers are. And, oh. and, sh- and then she goes at it with a power washer and you're just like, oh, this Whoa. is great. That's Restored. So satisfying. Yeah. 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 Now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. You know, every once in a while, I just get into a rut where I can only think about the bad things that are going on, the problems that I'm having or the problems that are in the world. Finding solutions to the problems that pop up in life is really satisfying, but it's a lot easier said than done. And we often spend too much time fixating on the bad things instead of thinking about how to move forward. And a therapist can help you become a better problem solver. We are huge proponents of therapy here at You Can Sit With Us. I have a great therapist and I love honestly using the chat function in BetterHelp just to check in with her every once in a while. Sometimes it's really just nice to have an objective person to talk to about my problems. If you're thinking of giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. It's convenient, accessible, affordable, and entirely online. Get matched with a therapist after filling out a brief survey and switch therapists at any time. When you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash sit with us today and get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash sit with us. Guys, do you know what my number one place to go to for wedding gifts is? Macy's! Macy's has absolutely everything. There is so much stuff at Macy's. Have you ever walked into a Macy's and like actually gone to all the floors? There's so much stuff. When a holiday is coming and you have to get ready no matter what it is, Mother's Day, Father's Day, 4th of July, Macy's always just seems to have what you need. Macy's is here to help us with another holiday because with the summer at its end, Macy's wants everyone to really enjoy the last bit of warm weather this Labor Day. We're probably gonna go up to the lake for Labor Day. You know, I might stop by Macy's, get myself some grilling tools, a cooler, maybe some sleeping bags for the kids. It doesn't matter what you're doing, trying to squeeze in one more beach trip for Labor Day or maybe hosting a poolside barbecue or taking the family out on a picnic, Macy's has the fun bathing suits, the double duty sunscreens, the fluffy towels, and everything else you need to finish off the summer with a bang. Head on over to Macy's.com. That's Macy's.com. I used to watch um, rug cleaning videos Mm, where they like sort of, you know, submerge the rugs because they're mm-hmm. they there are special places where you get your rugs cleaned. Oh yeah. And they have these huge vats of water. And then they submerge the rugs and then they spray them with like a high pressure hose uh-huh. uh to get all the yeah. dirt out. And oh my gosh, is it satisfying to watch. It makes me feel like my <laughs> carpets must be gross. I know. Right? I know. Like, yeah. All the stuff that comes out and you're like, that was in there. Well I think to myself like a normal looking rug goes in and it comes out and it's like Technicolor, yeah, and you and and like most rugs that we see now are very muted, right? Ugh. That's just because they're old and dirty. Centuries of dust, <laughs> love. But now they make them like that because it's cool to have like an old rug, right? Yeah. And yeah. so you know, places yeah. like World Market or whatever are making these muted-looking rugs. They are like a mass dress. Yeah. Oh. Um, there, speaking of other TikTok recipe people, mm. there's this one woman and she doesn't talk on TikTok and she wears like hijab. Uh, Have you seen her? No. no. I'm the only one. And she makes mostly like Middle Eastern type recipes. Ooh. And it's just like, she's beautiful and she uh-huh. has like full makeup and she just like has such great recipes that she found. It looks so delicious mm. and like everything is cut together really well. I'll Yum. define her. She's so good. Have you made any of the things that no, she's- No, I haven't. No? She, she makes it look like it's too easy and it looks like it's going to be hard. Oh. I mean, it's like one of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah, oh, yeah. I just cut up this onion and then there's like 20 onions cut up in the thing. And you're like, oh, How okay. did you do that? Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I would say you're the most like elaborate cooker or chef of all yes. of us. You're the only one that I would call like a chef. A cooker. <laughs> I would say the rest I'm of us cooker. are home cookers. <laughs> yeah. But you're cook. like, you make like big things and yeah, like fresh I try things. To. Mm-hmm. Like fresh pasta, seafood. Yeah. yeah. Yum. I like to go to the store and like, you know, feel everything, touch everything, get what I want. Do you plan your meals in advance or do you when do I'm it by organized, I, I do. Everyone, do you do it by you day know, or by the week? When I'm organized, when I'm good and I'm organized, I do. I'll go and yeah. I'll be able to get everything for the week. But, you know, sometimes I can't be that far sighted. 
Mm -hmm. When you guys go to the grocery store, do you pick up the same thing every time? Or is it, mm -mm. no, never? You, you like go staples. and you're like, I yeah. want yeah. to make salmon this week, so I'm going to get salmon. and Or I want to make this this week. So you have like a list of things. Mm -mm. I do. Always different things. Mm. You know? I have a list, but it's different every week. That's I we get, plan it out by like three days. I get the same thing mm. every time. Do it's, you cook the same things every week? In our house. I cook the same, same I cook the same proteins and vegetables mm -hmm. um, because those are the things that my kids will eat, you right. know, and, and, it, but, but it's also me too, you know, like I like certain things. And so those are the things that I eat. Like we love broccoli mm -hmm. and we don't love zucchini, you know, <gasps> and get so, her broccoli recipe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, and so every week it's always like, you know, three heads of broccoli, gallon of milk, like, uh, you know, uh -huh. 5,000 eggs, you <laughs> know, this is the girl. Oh, she's gorgeous. Wow. You have to follow her. Oh, okay. oh she's so cute. She's amazing. Her name's Abir Sag, A-B-I-R-S-A-G. Okay. Shout out. Shout out to Abir. She's amazing. <laughs> Inspirational. Ooh. Yeah. But, and yet, mm. even though I get the same thing at the grocery store every uh -huh. time, I go up and down all the aisles just to see what's new. Oh, yeah. You know, like to see if there's some new type of yogurt that I should be getting You know, to. I don't do that at the regular grocery store, but I do do that at Costco. <laughs> just to see what every time I'm at Costco, Costco, I have to go up and down all the aisles just to see because their yeah. inventory is always different. It's it, not it like it changes. Yeah, I know. Yeah, like maybe there, maybe you need a microwave. I have done that before. I'm like, ooh, new, <laughs> new microwave. <laughs> That's where I get in trouble because Costco is so big and you can only get things in huge family packs. I almost bought yeah. like their imitation cloud couch last time I was there. I was like, went in for you're just you're about to <laughs> for like a family sized thing of broccoli, and I'm like, Zach, should we get this like imitation cloud couch? And he's like, No, my back. <laughs> like, I need a firm couch. Oh, so. <laughs> no, my back. <laughs> I guess. Do you guys like going to the grocery store alone or with your partner or with other people, family, mm. or is that your quiet time? Yeah. It's like you're quiet. It, it is absolutely your time yeah. out time. Mine's my time out time. <laughs> Mine too. I have to put on AirPods, noise canceling mode, throw on some music or a podcast, and I'm just like, don't talk to me. I get very distracted very easily. I'm like here on a mission. <laughs> Maggie does not want to get picked up at the grocery <laughs> yeah, store. Do not look at me. <laughs> not a chance. <laughs> I'm just eyes on my own cart. <laughs> have you guys ever had anybody like try to talk to you at the grocery store? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. I feel like I'm normally everybody's got their heads down. It's kind of like a do 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 do. I think the Midwestern smiling thing is what gets me in trouble. Mm. Oh, yeah. Smile at everyone. Oh, anytime I make eye contact, I'm like, hey, hey. smile, <laughs> Becky. <laughs> <laughs> It just feels rude if I don't. <laughs> Becky's the one they're trying to pick you up. She's inviting. Look at her inviting little eyes. I'm trying to find my second husband at the grocery store. Becky's like, are you my new best friend? Are you, are my, you my new best friend? Are you my mom? <laughs> um, speaking of recipes, Rainy um, <laughs> had a question for us to ponder um, about a recipe queen on TikTok. Oh. Um, it was about Emily Marika. So it's not about a beer sog? It's not about a beer sog. Oh, okay. Um, just, just clarify. It's about <laughs> Emily Marika, who had what we would call a moment, you know, in the last year, right? Yeah. In the last year, the year before. Salmon rice queen. <laughs> Miles is going to get um, canceled for controversial <laughs> opinion. I do know. <laughs> about TikTok's darling, Emily Marika. I just don't what get it. What has she ever done to you, Miles? I don't get it. I don't get it, man. I don't <laughs> get it. Have you tried it? I'm just kidding. Have I tried what? <laughs> Salmon and rice? Yeah. So is fucking everybody. <laughs> Have I put it in the microwave? No. Because I eat it the day of. Like a fucking gentleman. I also, until I saw <laughs> her meals, I really didn't know you could like reheat fish. Are, in, my, are, in my mind, I was like, no, you don't reheat fish. There's got to be some sort of like weird fish bacteria. That what would you do? Out. You just throw it out? Like, no, what do you think? Eat make it, it fresh. Eat it cold. Eat, eat all of it. I eat whatever it is, and then I make oh. Keith eat whatever the rest is. Oh, <laughs> garbage <laughs> disposal. Well, what's the question then? So the question that Rainy had for us, yeah. um, which was researched in the sense that she knows who Emily Mariko is, <laughs> but unresearched in the sense that she didn't know Emily Mariko is engaged. I mean, I didn't know she was engaged. <laughs> Look at her. Really, she's Rainy's rolling it. I am, okay. This is where the question comes from. I'm fascinated by Emily Mariko. I also don't really get it, but to an extent I do. Like, I'm like, okay, well this is like, so I'm so mesmerized by this, but also in a way that it's like, why on earth is she doing this? How does she have this many likes? Like, 
but also like I, I'm just like what goes into her like mm -hmm. what is her thought process who is this woman and so that's why the question is who like who would she date? Who is who? What kind of man is she looking for? Or woman, or true, non-binary person? Yeah, anybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe through her cooking, she's going for that relatable sense. You know, mm -hmm. like like people can watch it and people are like I could do that. Well, here, you know, really quick, this is my issue. <laughs> it it yeah. isn't easy. The salmon one is, and then she gets into like four layer lattes with like chia seeds and blueberry jam that she made the night before. And I'm like, ew, ew, <laughs> ew. Sorry, chia seeds in a latte? Like, Barista miles. We shouldn't be giving her credit for this. I think they're overnight oats. Okay. <laughs> it's not a latte. A <laughs> it's like, she's so likable. It's easy to watch. It's fucking like great. But uh -huh. I just like. <laughs> Do you think it's like girl who gets home? Uh, like what does like girl who has jobs and gets home fake. and is oh, trying yeah. to sell us all these like yeah. cleaning products yeah. that she's actually like doing only sponsored content but nobody knows yeah, yeah or she's like an android she's a something. propaganda for <laughs> what Whole Foods yeah, for Whole Foods. <laughs> <laughs> she's fine she's not offensive she's great I think what I'm most jealous of is whenever she opens up her fridge there's like beautiful? Spotless. My fridge, when you open it, is like bottles are clanging. <laughs> like there's like 80 things like fall, mine, things fall down. Yeah. yeah, are like jiggling and there's like liquids and everything's everywhere. And hers is like, she has like two condiments. She has like, <laughs> I've had like a jar of pickles in my fridge for like two years that I'm like, I'll finish that jar someday. <laughs> it's vinegar. It's got to stay good. <laughs> but she just has like nothing. It's all like, she chops everything. She portions everything. It goes into these clean, clear little boxes. I'm like, are you cleaning your fridge before you film these? 100%, yeah. right? Or it's not her house. Yeah. The <gasps> set. Well, she did move. Okay, so maybe I watch her more than a casual. <laughs> maybe I follow her. You're she like, well, she recently. just moved three days ago. So. <laughs> she did. She moved. <laughs> she got a new rug. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. What else can you tell her about her house? Well, Becky? I first, okay, so with Emily Mariko, I saw someone post about why she was going so viral. And I was telling Miles and Rainey about it earlier. That was because she doesn't speak in her mm. videos. Anyone can watch them. Yeah. Anyone, anyone who has eyes. Yeah. Anyone who has eyes can watch them. And they're like very <laughs> pleasing. Yes. Yeah. And they're very pleasing, <laughs> like sort of like sensory videos where you're just seeing like all the chopping yeah. and whatnot. But this other girl that I saw talking about her said that Emily Mariko has always been a, like an it girl. Like she's always had her shit together. She's apparently been like doing YouTube videos for like a decade or something. Really? Like she has a whole nother, yeah, channel, but she just got popular on TikTok. Hmm. But she had already been, you know, living the like influencer mm. content creation life before mm. this. Pff, that's However old you want her to be. Yeah. <laughs> she's, she's ageless. Ageless. I feel like she's probably in her mid twenties. Yeah. So she's been making YouTube videos since she was 15. Doesn't add up. <laughs> she's 45. <laughs> Miles thinks it's a conspiracy theory. She's a robot. <laughs> She's a robot. She's a government plant. <laughs> For big cabbage. Yeah. <laughs> For big cabbage. <laughs> yeah. Tech I feel like her partner must work in like tech or finance. Just gives me the tech finance vibes. And she's, I think she's in San Francisco too. So it's like. With a fridge like not that. Not huge. She's definitely. <laughs> <Yeah>. Right. <laughs> With a fridge like that. Yeah. So. I think that. And I know she used to work in social. So I feel like. So Facebook people. Yeah. I feel like maybe like a Facebook, Instagram. Crypto. Person. Crypto. <laughs> oh, Jesus. If Emily Mariko started to like try to sell me NFTs. <laughs> <laughs> you would buy. <laughs> oh, my oh, God. Oh, 100%. I would um, have all of them in my house, on my walls, on my floor. Um, That's exactly you didn't get how that works. Emily Mariko drop? I would get the <laughs> <laughs> she changes her name to Mariko.eth or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Salmon.eth. <laughs> <laughs> Her salmon uh, bowl is an NFT. <laughs> oh, that tickled me. <laughs> tickled me. Wow. But that's who we think Emily Mariko would date. Mm. A tech guy. Tech guy. Okay. Speaking of salmon bowls, when you go to the grocery store, um, what's going through your mind? How much novelty are you introducing into your basket? 
Okay. <laughs> Novelty. I would say for me, none. Fifteen to twenty percent. Oh. That's high. I, I feel like that's very low. I feel like that's very, very low. It, also, think about think about like the no, sheer... What's your definition of novelty? <laughs> like, uh, oh, Trader Joe's has like never had, had it before. before. Uh, Ranch flavored apple. I'm uh-huh, just like uh-huh. putting it in. Yeah. No, no way. Like s- stuff that isn't actually delicious. No. no, stuff that is delicious, but just like something that's like, oh, I've never had that. Let's try it's it. It's usually like snacks mm. that I'll throw in, you know, but like mm. I also... When I when I talk in percentages, I I, I get a lot of food. <laughs> you know, my oh, family true. eats a lot of food, <laughs> yeah. and so when it comes to like twenty, to, like fifty to twenty percent is like two snacks. Mm. I love novelty <sighs> items. I just bought um, sriracha seasoning. Oh, so ooh, like my, it's a my spice, yeah, it's a powder. Oh. My spice mm. rack is just. Zach was like, Out "Okay, you need to you need to stop. Like every single time you come home from well, the grocery store, when you store, have fifteen bottles of tahini, you know, exactly. that adds up pretty quickly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, I run out of room, and I have the mini bottles to like keep in my purse. <laughs> so you know, it's important to me. I love salt, salt bay, salt, salt, hey. salt bay. Yeah, tahini. What about you, Matt? I feel like not a lot. I normally yeah. just do like what's most fresh or like what I know I'm going to cook. Mm-hmm. I don't do a lot of like, Ooh, I want to try these new packaged flavored things Stuff. or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty much the same. I really only get what's on the list unless I go to H Mart. In unless which it's case, candy. Unless it's candy. Well, that's why I have to <laughs> stick to the list. So I'm always trying to put candy in my like cart. I'll like grab something and then I'll put it back and I'll be like, no, we have like, eight bags of dark chocolate in the freezer. And I'm like, I think I need one more. <laughs> I think I need a caramel flavor. Um, but when I go to H Mart, I am like a child in a candy store. I go in with like the list of the frozen things that I know I love, like certain brands of mm-hmm. dumplings. But then otherwise I just go up and down the aisles and grab things that like look nice or like have a fun label or if I have to get I mean, like... Asian Mart is the Korean grocery store. Yes. So most things are not listed in English. So you just don't yes. even know what they are. So yeah. that's usually what I'll do too if I need to get like a condiment. So like a soy sauce or like rice vinegar or Chinese vinegar. I'll go in and get one that I know is the thing that I'm looking for, like soy sauce. I'll be like, okay, this clearly says like soy sauce. And then I'll grab whatever's next to it that's not in English hmm. and try <laughs> <Fine>. that. Because <laughs> they're only like, you know, a couple bucks. So also, I'm no like, wonder you have so many bottles clinging around in your <laughs> <That's true. laughs> refrigerator. Becky's <laughs> just, just grabbing stuff that she I doesn't do. know what yeah. it is. Yeah. I do do that often. Or I get something where I'm like, I don't know what to make with this. Huh? I got miso paste one day because I was like, Yum. seems like everybody likes miso paste. I'll get some. We have some miso paste. I didn't yeah. know what to do with it. Actually, they say that those fermented things like anchovies and mm-hmm. miso paste, you just put a little <laughs> bit into everything mm-hmm. you're cooking and it's supposed to give you more like umami flavors. Yum. And they just say to combine yeah. those. So you should do like a couple different of those flavors and just a tiny bit of each. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. That's, that's making me yeah, hungry. Makes it more savory. I know, I'm kind of getting hungry <laughs> yeah. too. How often do you guys go to the grocery store? What's Two your, times a week? Yeah, once or uh-huh. twice. Depends. I always have to make sure I have a full meal too before I go. Do you guys do that? Uh, oh yeah. If I don't. Have you gone to the grocery store hungry? It's the worst. Get a protein 100%. shake at the grocery store. Just oh my God. And drink it while I'm there. Do you guys, do you guys, okay. When you're at the grocery store, do you <clears throat> open stuff at the grocery store and eat it at the grocery store? And then of course buy it. Like when you're leaving. I always thought it was illegal. Sometimes. And then I had a friend who did it and I was like, <gasps> I do it probably and then every now time. I see more people arrested. doing it. Yeah. Like I've always got an open bag of goldfish. Now or... that people don't have their masks anymore. I feel like yeah. people are doing yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. And I feel like, uh, especially <clears throat> with the kids, you've got to give them something in the grocery store yeah. to keep them like busy. Under control. <laughs> Otherwise keep it's, can contained. I have this? Can I have this? Can I have this? It's be all so, candy in the so car. So grocery store isn't your peaceful time then. You bring the kids. <laughs> <laughs> it's not when I have my kids with me. <laughs> Yeah. I would love to to have, you know, like multiple times a week when I can go to the grocery store. What's your day. biggest grocery store fail? Like something you Ooh. got that was thought was going to be so good and then it was just like the worst. Ooh. I made a recipe once. So I went, Matt made lentils one time and I thought they were like the best thing that I've ever eaten in the, my life. I was like, oh my God, I want these lentils every day. And so I started following some Indian TikTokers 
and they had all these lists of spices and all these things that you should, and like how to make like really good doll. So I went and I got all these spices. I mean, Keith and I probably spent like 30 minutes in this grocery store, like perusing things and like talking <laughs> to the guy at the counter and being like, is this good? Is this, is this the right thing to buy? And then I got home, put everything in the pressure cooker, let it sit. So this is, we're at, we're at about four hour endeavor at this point. Wow. I made it and I didn't like it. Like inedible, Fail. didn't like, or like it wasn't bad? inedible. It just wasn't as good as the lentils that you had made that one time <laughs> that I'd gotten used to eating, and this was like a new flavor. And Keith liked it, and Keith ate it, but I was just like, I almost cried because I was like, it just took so long, and I really, I wanted to like it. And then we had all these spices that I was like, I have to find ways to use these that isn't this recipe. So I was looking for like a million other recipes, and then we were having doll like <laughs> three times a week. Yeah. Like I love lentils. making lentils because then you could put them on so many things. Like I'll do them on toast yeah. in the morning and stuff. Mm. Just throw them into like salads. Yeah. You guys have any fails? Grocery store cooking fails? Oh, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> 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 this was, I think, uh, shortly after I graduated college. I had my mom over and I was like, I'm going to make us Peruvian ceviche. It's going to be so yummy. I did way too many grocery swaps. And I remembered her oh, no. just coming over and I wanted to make it ahead of time and I didn't know that you're supposed to like soak it in lime juice like 20 minutes before you serve it. And there's like all these like little things. One, I didn't have le limes, so I used lemon and then I didn't <laughs> no. have like the Peruvian chilies, so the correct ones. And then I like didn't have the right Peruvian corn, so I used like oh, no. the store-bought American yellow corn. <laughs> and my mom like goes to take a bite and we're like, oh, I'm so excited. And we take a bite together and my mom's face and my face both just <laughs> looked at each other and was like, this is bad. This is terrible. Was the shrimp raw? It wasn't shrimp. So Peruvian oh, okay. ceviche is usually white fish unless it's a mixed ceviche. So I just used forgot, maybe sea bass or something like that. But also was it raw. It was raw. The way I cut it too, but it cooks. <laughs> How did you in, cook it? In the lime juice. But you didn't have lime juice. I used well, lemon. Oh, okay. I used lemon juice. I was like, <laughs> you needed this. <laughs> it was sushi grade too. So yeah, um, it was. So you could have eaten it. You could have eaten it. Yeah, raw. yeah. But just like the look, I just I like, dishonor on my entire family. Well, she was the only one there, but just like I remember her eyes, my eyes watering, and just like this is so bad. And I didn't cut it correctly. I didn't cut it like with the grain. <laughs> oh, no. So oh, no. I had m much to learn. Uh -huh. Much to learn. <laughs> At least so. you tried. Yeah. 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 You never know till you try. Yeah. I went back into it and I got the right ingredients this time. So <laughs> it's hard when you're shooting for a flavor that you know. Yes. That's true. Mm -hmm. And because I have like these fine, very finely chopped like red onions that like soak in yeah. the, the lime mm. juice as well. And I had it like really thickly cut too. And she's <laughs> just like, what is going on? Like, <laughs> just wanted to do something nice. <laughs> too many swaps, too many Fail. swaps. Failed. <laughs> Failed. Ceviche. Fail. Failed. Failed. What about you guys? Any failures? I feel like my mine always comes with the the cooking method. So it's <laughs> I was like, gonna say mine always comes out perfect. Um, out perfect. <laughs> no, I feel like I'm never fully happy. You know, it's mm -hmm. always like, oh, this isn't as good as last time, or I should have done this, or I should have done that. And Eugene always gets mad at me. He's like, it's fine. <laughs> but mine always comes with I'm not a baker. I don't really like to bake. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times when I do baking things, they don't always turn out right or like burned. And then <laughs> um, a lot of times on the grill, cause I don't grill a lot either. Mm. A lot of things will not come out right. AKA mm. burned. I'm a burner. <laughs> You're a burner. I burn things sometimes, which is, you know, disappointing. Mm. You know, I'm more of just like cooking <clears throat> on the stove mm -hmm. type person. Yeah. 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 Watching and tasting. Yeah. Adjusting. Yeah. 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 I, I'm not very good with meat. Sometimes it's it, it's often overcooked because I'm hor horribly Bold afraid chicken. of of undercooked meat. Yeah, um, you know, so it's like tough or something like that. Um, but actually, I think that my worst fail is probably beans. I, oh no! Beans. Yeah, I I I grew up with canned beans, and yeah. uh, there was a period of time where I was like, "Well, canned things aren't good for you," which is not true. Canned beans mm -hmm. are fine. Um, and so I started doing the you know like bagged. Um, dry oh, beans, God, the ones that you soak overnight. I didn't know how to soak them, so I just <laughs> boiled them. <laughs> you like really hard. Like, yeah, yeah and they, I was like, were they edible? What's wrong? <laughs> no, they were not edible. Probably that would give you a tummy ache too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> no, I was like, I don't know what's wrong with these. What did I do wrong? I just boiled the beans. They're like vegetables, right? <laughs> Some of them, you know? Yeah. Some yeah. are legumes. Yeah. <laughs> legumes. Yeah. Do you have a recipe that you're known for? Does anyone ever be like, oh, please bring this? Oh. Like if you were to have it on your gravestone, oh. <laughs> what would your recipe be, Becky? <laughs> My recipe would probably be... I don't think we've ever made it for other people, but Keith and I probably once a week have mushroom pasta. Mm. And I followed this chef. I'm blanking on her. Oh, Sophia Rose. Mm -hmm. So I follow this New York chef, Sophia Rose, and she showed this recipe because I love mushrooms. Like I could eat just raw mushrooms, cooked mushrooms, any, any way you make them, I'll eat them. Uh, but she has- So a, you're a psychopath. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Shiitake are the best, IMO. Uh, but she has this- way of cooking them where you basically are like almost lightly frying them. So you dump them in a pan and you leave it for like five minutes, just cooking on one side and then you flip it over. And then I cook the pasta in that. Ooh. Like I deglaze with a little bit of like a white wine mm -hmm. or a, a very light vinegar Yummy. to try and like scrape off all the good mushroom flavor. Mm. <laughs> and then I'll make that with whatever like sauce. But I would say that's like a one that I'm like, this is good. Gravestone recipe. This is good. Yeah. Mm. Mushroom pasta. I make a pretty good dairy-free banana bread where I just, my Ooh. secret, lots of bananas. <laughs> lots <laughs> of bananas. Um, it took me a while to get my chocolate chips not to sink to the bottom, but when we were on a family vacation, I think I made banana bread at least like seven days in a row for everyone. Um, my gosh. And, I, and I finally did it. I finally did it. So you put chocolate chips in your banana bread. Yeah. That's what you're saying. Dark chocolate? Dark chocolate. Wow. Yeah. Chocolate I love for chocolate breakfast. Chips mm, 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 mm. I love cake for breakfast. Mm -hmm. But I'm not much of a baker either. So. Mm -hmm. But that's that's my favorite thing. <laughs> banana <laughs> what bread. Would banana bread. Gravestone recipe. Yeah. Banana bread. What would yours be, Matt? What are you making most of the time? I feel like... Especially when I'm hosting, I make falafels a lot. Mm -hmm. That's something you can like yeah. prep everything for ahead of time. And then they always turn out really good. Yeah. You just like fry up the falafels boy right too. away. Yeah. yeah, I do lots of pizza. Matt, if you made me a salad every day for the rest of my life, is that Matt makes the yummiest salad dressings I've ever had. They're so simple. He's just like, yeah, it's just this blended done. And I'm like, you could make me a salad every single like day. A, would, yeah. no, like I'd be so happy. Yeah. Mustard. Just, yeah. Just herbs. add whatever you herbs. want. You know, yeah. easy, whatever you got. Breadcrumbs. Yeah. My mouth is watering just thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Ariel? That's it. Your headstone hard. recipe. Eggs. It's got to be eggs. there forever. It's got to be eggs. Yeah. It's got to be it's eggs. Be you can eggs. make any kind of yes, egg. Eggs. I can make any kind of egg. Yeah. I can make any kind of egg. Um, yeah. It would be eggs or. So the the one of the recipes that I'm trying to perfect right now mm -hmm. is like a breakfast muffin where mm. I can incorporate uh, lots of vegetables without the kids really realizing it. Oh yeah, you know. So it's it's like a carrot cake ish recipe uh, with a little bit of zucchini, uh, but I try to you know you have to kind of make it. Uh, not as gooey. Yeah. Like right now they're really gummy because mm -hmm. I try to put too much. Uh, yeah. In there, so I'm working on that. I'm working on that, but definitely eggs and roasted vegetables. I make roasted vegetables every other day. Just lots of olive oil, salt, veggies, pepper. Mm. Yeah. Are you the primary cooker? Hundred percent. House. Yeah. 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 I mean, I <laughs> Eugene doesn't. <laughs> Eugene doesn't cook. Yeah. No. No. And I mean, you are, but Keith mm -hmm. does some of it. Yeah, it depends on the. I would say during the week I do most of the cooking, and then on the weekends he'll do the cooking. Same. Yeah. Caseify has phone cases that seriously are sleek, stylish, and they're actually protective for your phone. I love Caseify. I have so many, like hundreds and thousands of different options. I currently have a rainbow checker print case that I love. I've had this for a couple months. I just love freshening up and feeling like I have a new phone without actually purchasing a new phone. Caseify's Ultra Impact Crush cases are some of the most protective, unique cases on the market, and their Chi Tech 2.0 technology makes them drop proof up to 9.8 feet. That's a lot of feet. You get 360 degree protection and ultra slim style with tons of prints and designs to choose from. Even fully customized cases that you can design on your own. 
Another great feature is their signature camera ring, which protects your precious camera lens. And their crush cases are made from 65% recycled and plant-based materials. Get one of the most protective, cool looking, and environmentally friendly phone cases the internet has to offer. Go to casetify.com and use our code 15 sit with us or use the link in our description box to get 15% off your case to order. That's 15% off with our code 15 sit with us at case And you guys are cooking separate meals. <laughs> yeah, it's every man for himself. Yeah, you have different in my diets. <laughs> no, no, we're pretty good at about having just like chopped things ready to go so Zach can like mm. grab from here and like we have like an entire vat of like basmati rice ready to f- up for grabs and vegetables and protein so like we mix and match but yeah prep wise every man for themselves <laughs> <laughs> that's that I've been on a frozen vegetable kick lately yeah mm. yeah I just right from the they're so easy right from they're so easy yeah. I've started instead of buying fresh spinach or kale for smoothies I just buy frozen Hmm. Yeah, and like it never goes bad. It's supposedly picked at peak freshness. Hmm. Um, I'm getting my probably 17th spam call of the day. 17? Oh no, I'm on some sort of list right I've now. I've been on I'm a list getting, lately too. I get so many spam calls. I'm getting like easily 15 to 20 spam calls a day. I get I'm like three like texts a day from people asking if I need money. If you need what? money or yeah. to give money, if you no, need if money. I need I'd be like, money. Yeah. Oh. No, send like, it over, like, baby. Like, this, you know, this is. Sonia with something something capital how much do you need and I'm like you guys don't don't have the setting um to filter all your stuff it's kind of annoying though because when the doctors do call or someone I actually need to talk to that's not in my address book they Mm -hmm. also like I had a phone appointment last week and they were calling like crazy or DoorDash sometimes this is not why well, I guess it is sponsored. <laughs> um, um, they'll be calling like crazy and I'll either be at work or doing something and I'm not getting the calls and I'll look down at my phone. I'm like, oh my God, they're here. And I'm running outside. I'm like, I'm so oh. sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh no. Yeah. So it just filters any call that's not in your contact yeah, list? Yeah, I'll find it in my settings. Oh. I turned it on. Well, I can't. So I can't do that because I don't add people's phone numbers. Oh, then you can't. I'm, I want constant surprise. I want everyone going to voicemail, leaving me a voicemail, letting me know what they want to talk about before I call them back. Wow. <laughs> now we know Becky has you none of our preview. phone numbers in her phone. I want a preview. <laughs> you want a trailer. Any job I've ever had, I didn't put their number up because I was like, that way if they call, I'll look at it, let it go to voicemail, and then pick You'll it up know. later. Mm. See what it is. I don't get put on the spot. You want to be prepared. I want to be prepped. Prepped for all my phone calls. Mm. Huh. My dad was always a really good phone call person. He, yeah. uh, he, without fail, will answer the phone. Doesn't matter who it is. He's like, "Hello, this is Mark." Or he, or if, <laughs> or if it's like in his phone, like whoever it is, he's like, "Hi, Pete." You know? Aww. Yeah. I've always wanted to be like that, but I'm not. I'm more of the. I'll look at my phone and be like, "Not prepared for this conversation." I'm like, "Why are you calling me? Can you just text me? <laughs> <laughs> Can you text me, please?" <laughs> are we ready to move on from food conversation? Oh yeah. Our next pop culture moment. <laughs> what? Why are you guys laughing? I just, the yeah, transition. I just, I'm so curious what Rainy is put. <laughs> I, I, I forgot. <laughs> Rainy like does these at like 3 a.m. <laughs> Our next pop culture moment after Emily Marco is, Marco. <laughs> is the good housekeeping headline. Yeah. Oh, give it to me. I love good housekeeping. Kate Middleton oh, has yeah. a very flirty, borderline, inappropriate nickname for Prince William. Can you guess what it is? I already know what it is, so I'm going to stay out. What would be your guess? <laughs> would be her bordering on inappropriate. Yeah, for Prince William. Kate Beckinsale. No. Kate Middleton. Middleton. Kate Middleton. Kate so Beck- his so his wife. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is it like 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 Willie? Yeah. <laughs> Along there, yeah, yeah. Oh, Keep so going. so it's it's like more inappropriate, uh, like Big Willie. Yes, Did you guys watch Game of Thrones? Because the new prequel series just came out, the new Cop. House of Dragons, which is all about being born into ah. a monarchy, and you know having to shoulder that responsibility or not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, having th- ruling the Iron Throne. <laughs> so now you watched it. I watched it last night. Yeah, I, <laughs> no spoilers. I watched it last night. Yeah. Oh, it's out. 
It's out. It just started. The first oh episode my gosh. last night. Oh, I'm so out. excited. I mean, this is not so a spoiler, excited. but the whole series is going into House of Targaryen and like their history and their past and stuff about when they were the ruling in King's Landing. Mm-hmm. Are you guys watching any bad TV right now? Or good TV? Game of Thrones channel. We just watched the um, Woodstock 99 documentary oh, yeah. on Netflix. Good? There was Woodstock 69, I think it was, or 68, whatever it was. Um, and Woodstock 99 was a shit show. It was crazy. It literally ended in was fire. It like lawless? That's oh. what I was saying. Yeah. yeah, it was like lawless. There were like a lot of factors that led to it, but mostly like there was not. It was also crazy watching it in the context of being like a post Astro World mm. viewer mm. and seeing like a, just a massive crowd of people like dancing to Limp Biscuit and, mo- and having like a mosh pit and stuff and like seeing that and being like, oh, Oh my God, that's so unsafe. Yeah. And they're like, there wasn't clean water. There wasn't, Ooh. it was a lot of like, they were on like tarmacs because it was like an old uh, like Air Force base or something up in New York. Um, but it was basically like h- horrifying. Whoa. It was awful. I got, I learned the phrase trench mouth from the documentary. Ugh. What is it? You get cold sores and like sores inside your mouth from drinking unsanitary water. Oh. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah. That's but it's gross. a three-parter documentary, and it was really good. I huh. thought it was really interesting. Makes you not want to go to music festivals. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it definitely made me go, uh-uh. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, that was a good show that we watched. We've been on a lot of, like, true stuff. The Manti Teo documentary. Oh, that's what we just watched, yeah. That was a big one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, my that gosh. Is, so he's a college football player from Hawaii in... He went to Notre Dame, which I think number one, oh my gosh, you go from Hawaii to Indiana of all Whoa. places, like mm. ugh, so cold. Um, but he had a girlfriend mm. and on the same day, his girlfriend and his grandma died. So his grandma mm. died in the morning and then his girlfriend died at night. And then gosh. he kind of went on this, um, not publicity campaign, because it was kind of like sports writers heard that and were like, tell us more. You're such, you're so inspirational because Notre Dame is so, like Rudy took place in Notre Dame. There are a lot of like, uh, underdog stories that come out of Notre Dame. Mm-hmm. Well, like a couple months later, it turns out that girlfriend was not real. He was catfished. <gasps> he was catfished. And it like basically ruined his like NFL career. Yeah. And the person who catfished him is in the documentary. Whoa. And she talks about what? what happened and like what was going through her mind and why she did it. Yeah. And so you get to hear their kind of like contrasting things. Because for him, it was like at the time, <coughs> he's my age. So when he was a senior in college, I was a senior in college. So I'd heard about it. And mm. most of the like rhetoric around it was about either him being gay or him being involved in it. Mm. Yeah. That he was like a part of it. Uh, uh. Because the person who catch bitched him yeah. was a trans woman. Mm. He's a trans yeah. woman. Mm. So he didn't know, or the documentary puts in a place. <gasps> yeah, that says that nobody that in the documentary at the time of know. filming knew. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So it was like very, very stressful, very interesting, and posed a lot of like yeah. moral questions. Mm-hmm. Huh. And also, it, uh, why does it always go back to everyone being gay or like. <gasps> yeah. It was you know, like, why was their it? Their sexual was, identity. It's so crazy. Yes. When it was only about like, yeah, it was just like about his fake girlfriend dying. But then it became like a big, well, because he was also, I think what fed into that was they sensationalized the fact that he was LDS. So they were like, he's just lying. And this is all an elaborate story. So he doesn't have to tell his family and church that he's gay. Mm. Mm -hmm. And so it was just honestly very sad. Sad for everyone involved, I think. Mm -hmm. A lot of therapy. Well, I, you know, I'm really into a lot of British crime drama. Uh-huh. So I've been watching this one series called Hidden, and it's about these people who get kidnapped in Wales. So half of it is in Welsh, which is really interesting. Um, but, you know, it's like the the typecast of like very stormy, moody, raining all the time. Mm. Crime drama of just like crazy people in these old houses. It's great. Rocky Crags. And- yeah. Oh. yeah. Rocky Crags. Crags. Yes. Crags. But it's also because the Welsh part is very interesting because I feel like you don't really know what Welsh oh, yeah. sounds like. Yeah. They're kind of up it. in the middle of. Yeah. It's it's so crazy. Middle of the it's good. clouds. That's what I've been yeah. watching <laughs> mm-hmm. lately. Ooh, that's good. What about you, Mags? Any shows or books or movies? 
Uh, this weekend we watched the season finale of the rehearsal. Nice. And then, no spoilers. <laughs> and then last night while I was doing laundry, we put on a documentary about psychedelics. Oh, yeah, it's on Netflix. It's pretty good. Was it the book one? The the guy who wrote the book. He, he was where he talks about it's like shrooms, mm -hmm. the cactus one. Peyote is apparently everywhere in L.A. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think it's the same one. But yeah. like the opening scene was him snorting tobacco because apparently that was <gasps> oh yeah it was scary i was like oh my god i didn't even know that was a thing but it was very interesting so you've learned that you can snort tobacco That's i what learned you took that. from the documentary yeah, i actually <laughs> have some right now that she, we're gonna do a live yeah. snorting on air yeah L live snort yeah cool speaking of the rehearsal i cannot get through an episode of that show really <laughs> Does it make you too i, I rewatched another it's just too slow in a way that's <sighs> like there's not enough happening and they just kind of stare at each other. And it's like, have you watched Nathan for you before? Like uh, his, not like any of his shows. Like I guess like so his Starbucks stunt and stuff like that. I yeah. was yeah. familiar with, but not there's a, but it's just like to an extreme and you're like, okay, get moving people. Come on. And like some of the situations <laughs> of like, these are so improbable. You know what I mean? It just yeah. feels kind of fabricated. <laughs> Miles he leans dying. in for sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it is fabricated. <laughs> he built a set. Yeah. Well, even that, like the situations that people find themselves in, the, yeah. then they're coming to rehearse. And I'm like, oh, you think it's not real? Well, some of them feel a little stretched. I out. think that the, the shock know. factor is that they're able, some of the people that they cast, is you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that they're real. Yeah. 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 I don't think they're real. Really? That's my hot. Yeah. My hot. Keith and I mm -hmm. have a hot take of we think that it's. So well, I, no, we can't say can't no because the you didn't watch the finale. Haven't seen the finale, so I don't want to say anything. I know that for Nathan, for you, uh, some of the bit characters are not yes. real, but the re the main crux people are real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like they would cast like a grip as somebody that needs to be in like a scene for ten seconds or something like that. Who's like oh like have yeah. a weird reaction, but then the main state characters are real in the thing. But I haven't yeah. seen the show finale. Yet. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think, yeah, I don't think it spoils anything. I think Angela is not real. So the concept of the show, the rehearsal is Nathan Felder, who is a comedian, uh, tries to help because he used to have a show called Nathan for you and he would set up these elaborate plans, basically like take a dumb idea to the 10th degree. Mm -hmm. uh, and so he has this show called the rehearsal now where he helps people rehearse for a real event that's going to happen in their life. Like in the first episode, someone uh, lied to his trivia team about having a master's degree. So Nathan helped him rehearse every outcome in every situation of what would happen. But he does it in a way of like building the trivia bar. So that the guy goes there hiring extras to walk around and make it feel like a bar. And then he has a little computer and he's going through all the different like scenarios. His little laptop stand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So when we say real, it's like, is someone an actor? Are they a real person? Yeah. This makes me psyched for the finale. Yeah. And so our hot take is that Angela, it's all a rehearsal for Angela. I think she's real. The real Angela. Mm. And, and now that we've covered the rehearsal. Yeah. <laughs> um, we want to thank you guys all for tuning in. Thanks so much for listening. Um, be sure to continue washing your hands, being kind to others, wearing your face masks in crowded areas, and we will see you guys next week. Bye. 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 Bye.